Um, so I'm uh, Greg Conti, and the reason why I'm here is just to, to present some research, um, and really that's relevant to all of us, on the sensors in our lives, the instrumentation, and uh, the instru how our lives are becoming more and more instrumented, and where that could go. And, and I, I take it that we're really at a point where it's not if we can lead a private life, uh, or what percentage of our life is private. It, it's more a matter of what percentage of our life is private and where that percentage will be in the future. So this talk's gonna kind of cover this breadth, hopefully um, expanding, uh, you know, there should be some things in here, a little bit surprising for everybody, but just kind of think across the breadth of the problem and, and it, see just really how much of our lives is instrumented. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on the usual suspects. So there's things that are pretty much common knowledge to people interested in privacy. We'll touch upon that, but I'm not going to dwell in, uh, dig, oh, uh, dig deeply, <laughs> uh, dig deeply into uh, things that are, are pretty well trodden, more focusing on the breadth. And it's also, uh, we're going to look at some countermeasures, but really the countermeasures, and there's a, a wide range of things we can do, but I, I argue there's really no silver bullet uh, technology or policy countermeasure. This is almost like the tide, right? So we, can, we can't stop the tide, but maybe we can help divert the water and, or the, divert the direction a little more positively. And also, I, this is probably the lar one of the largest gatherings of privacy-aware folks in the world right now in this room. And... It's a good opportunity to throw some ideas around. So I'm interested in your questions and dialogue in the uh, Q&A room three after, afterwards as well. And if, if, uh, so I thought this slide was an appropriate way to start. This is a Ron Galela, uh, the godfather or the, the godfather of the American paparazzi. And here you can see him with his camera stacking, uh, stalking Jackie Onassis before the restraining order, of course. So no one, re no one actually reads um, disclaimers, so I thought it would be interesting to just translate it into different languages over and over again and back and forth and see what popped out. So I'll read that one. Uh, the viewpoints of views expressed by the author of the statement costumes and do not reflect the official policy of the University of Bow and the United States Army, Pentagon, US government sector employment. So that's about as legible as the original um, or understandable, so I th thought it'd be fun. So th as you go through this, think about the sensors in your lives. Think about the sensors you've invited. Uh, think about the ones you don't know are there and what you've traded uh, for, you know, sometimes you have an opt-in option, sometimes you have an opt-out option, uh, sometimes you have no option. And just to think through that as you see the different ideas we throw forward. First off, it's surprisingly difficult to find pictures of uh, people wearing ninja masks taken by ATM cameras, uh, but... Uh, so I apologize if this is someone in the room. Uh, but the, uh, the Nashville Police Department uh, had, a, uh, had a set online, so I, it was, uh, I took advantage of it. Uh, but uh, joking aside, this... Uh, we don't want to live in a world where we have to wear a ninja mask to preserve some element of our privacy. And when you think about how information is being gathered, uh, sometimes it's relentless. Uh, has anyone tried to avoid taking the census? Yeah, how did that go? <laughs> right, they're pretty relentless. Um, and, you know, robocallers calling your homes, trying to make contact, satellites flying overhead, cars driving around the streets with cameras on top. I mean, really, who could have thunk that 20 years ago, uh, mapping the whole country? And, and sometimes we go to them. Um, you know, there were people uh, it, who went to Black Hat, had, you know, they, they had a barcode on the badge, and if you went up to a vendor booth, they'd scan your badge, and, and you got some trinket in return. And literally, people were getting, giving, and that was probably uh, at the cost of a lifetime of spam through that, from that company. Uh, so people were going up to get a button with a blue blinky light on it from one vendor. So they've traded a lifetime of spam from a company for a blue blinky light. And these are security experts. 
Uh, but, but really, it's not the people in this room. I mean, everyone in this room is aware, right? You, you're able to defend yourselves to the degree you wish to be defended. Uh, but the, we have to really think in terms of everybody else, the people walking around pushing strollers with uh, six, you know, six kids walking through Caesars and walking up and down the strip, the people who buy bottles of Dr. Pepper and, uh, and go to the website and type in the code, uh, the people who respond to surveys printed on their, um, on their restaurant receipt. Does anyone want to admit to having done that? Did you win? A, anyone win any of the... Did anyone, you won? Someone won. Ah, very cool. So, I mean, it's, they offer, you know, I always thought the odds were like one in 10 billion or something to actually win, so very cool. Um, and no talk on privacy is complete without a discussion of the Panopticon, which is uh, a design that, uh, this is a, a, of a prison, uh, but the, what they're getting at is people behave differently when they're being surveilled, ideally when anonymously surveilled and that was part of a prison design. So it's something to think about how, these, how this instrumentation influences our society. And then what will the data, what insights will this data provide? And we're really hitting a point now where we can be uh, predictive. We can predict m what masses of people will do. We can, I, I believe, we can predict what largely individuals can do based on the sums of the data being collected. Now, of course, this, this instrumentation serves dual purposes. So uh, I'm not saying that it's all bad, and, nor that it's all good. But what we really need to do is think about the right balance and the right ways we can prevent. It's kind of like the Wild West out there. People are running amok and finding the right limits on behavior by those collecting the data. So this talk starts off with, uh, kind of walks through the data collection in your personal life uh, a little bit online. I'm really staying in the analog space here uh, because I think in the real world it impacts us. You know, people think about it a little bit less perhaps. Uh, and, and in your home, uh, community, some countermeasures and then where the technology is going. So as you see these different sensors, um, or platforms that, uh, that I'll present, th it's useful to kind of think through various facets of them. You know, what's the sensor? What's its capabilities? Is it analog or digital? Does it have a power source? So if you're going to hack this thing or try and influence it in some way, it's good to know how it works. What are its strengths and weaknesses? What's the input? Um, what is it sensing? What is the subject? Is the, what's the environment it's operating in? Is there a warning? or a public warning, do people know about it, warning or not? Uh, is there a privacy policy? Uh, is it an understandable privacy policy? Can you opt in? Can you opt out? Or is it, a real, is it some sort of realistic opt out? Like you can opt out if you stop breathing air kind of opt out. And are you complicit? Have you made a decision to uh, be engaged by this uh, in return for something? How, where is the data being retained? How much of it is being retained? Is it ever destroyed? And I think that's something we need to think about, to think a lot more about, is it's often in the best uh, interest of those collecting the data to not destroy it. Certainly, um, it's all about incentives. Is there incentive for the data to be destroyed? If a company's worried about being subpoenaed, perhaps they'll delete their email over time. Uh, but that, that's a potential solution that can be valuable, and I think one that's actually workable on a large scale is the idea of maybe pushing forward on the idea of destruction a lifespan, you know, the idea of learning, uh, learning, teaching ourselves to forget, because humans forget, and it works pretty well, uh, but, uh, you know, with the cost of hard drives, it's, it's trivial to retain data often uh, infinitely. What type of processing is taking place, either on the device or post-processing? Are they processing for uniqueness? Can they tell, it, maybe they don't know who the identity of an individual, but if an individual pops up again, can they tell it's the same person? Is that type of activity taking place? Are, is, the, is it such a resolution where they can tie it to a database of individuals in some way? Any other data mine, are, is there any other data mining uh, taking place? How is it being communicated? Is it being communicated in real time, near real time, uh, in a batch? You know, if you've got a, you know, a, a given device, are you syncing it with something else with network, tech, uh, network connectivity? Uh, does the, what's the odds of it leaking? And finally, who's consuming that information? Is it just being stored or is it being consumed in some fashion? There's those that you know 
and those that you don't know. And those people that you don't know, how did they get their hands on it? Thinking about processing, we'll cover some automated means later in the talk, but there's also just some interesting innovations of enlisted crowdsourcing <laughs> surveillance. Uh, this is the Internet Eyes website. It's uh, out of the EU, and they allow anonymous viewers to earn points by monitoring video cameras um, uh, and then reporting things they see. Uh, so, uh, and the winner of, earns a thousand pound uh, monthly prize. The runner-ups get included in a thank you list. And you can see at the bottom just an example of the, the view that, that they demonstrate. And it should come as no surprise for people in this room. What boat is this? So the Exxon Valdez. And I, I collected this more than 100 days ago, so there's probably other examples that could be used. But it should come as no surprise in, in, to anyone in this room that information is slippery. It has a way of legally and Ill illegally spilling. And you know, the idea, again, it comes back to the idea of, of destroying the data at some point, learning to forget may be valuable. And there's this trend that it's a lot easier if there's something unique. As you're trying to analyze this data, people are trying to find ways to uniquely identify individuals or devices or, or, and the like. Uh, a, an interesting example is that of firearm microstamping, where the firing pin has a small number on it. You fire the gun, the casing pops out, and there's a serial number on the casing. Uh, the idea of digital cameras. <clears throat> Uh, the idea of digital cameras, that pixel noise in the, in the sensor can be used to uniquely identify a camera, uh, potentially, and that that can uh, tell what photo was taken by what camera. Uh, and, but there's this wide range, and the EFF has a, a very nice list on their website and some other places. But thinking about your social security number, the, your, your DNA, there's talk now of um, if one person's arrested for a crime, uh, they can tell, uh, they could potentially tell uh, that a family member uh, of that person could, ma could match close enough to a person who uh, committed another crime. So if, if, if I committed something and my brother did something, they could, and they had a DNA sample of my brother but didn't know who that was, uh, there's some ongoing legal debate whether they can, uh, they can use that, uh, that, that's enough probable cause to bring in, uh, bring in my brother. And then a wide variety, I mean, it seems like every facet of our lives, is there, people are trying to find ways to make it unique so it can be tracked. And you've, you've probably, uh, well, certainly biometrics is all about that. Um, I mean, people who are ham radio operators know that you, that you can tell a person, experienced operators can tell a person by their, their fist how they, how they send Morse code. Um, gate recognition, uh, printers and copiers, the idea of putting micro dots on there so that they can be tracked. So anyway, the, I wanted to, what I wanted to get at here is the idea that uniqueness is important, uh, a facet of what we're talking about. The, and there are other emerging technologies, and this I didn't make up, this is from Chat Roulette, there's apparently a problem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's useful, I mean, it's all about incentives, right? So people are finding ways to, uh, motivations to, uh, to collect and perform, you know, ongoing analysis of, of data. Uh, and then sensors, sensors are getting cheaper, they're becoming more embedded in toys, in our phones, and millions of other places. And it's just, the cost is dropping. So let's look at things you might carry on your person. And you can think of the idea of RFID tags and clothing, uh, that you may get custom clothing made online. There's a kid's website now that kids can go online and design custom clothes, and then three weeks later it'll show up to their house. Uh, you, as an opt-in option, you may have chosen to uh, use the Nike plus iPod system and put a sensor in your shoe. Uh, and again, think about this is today, and you have to look into the future and say, where is this going? Uh, one of the biggest culprits is your phone. Uh, sent more and more sensors are, are be becoming embedded. Uh, the idea of applications, some of them arguably not all that trustworthy, performing activity, phones may be automatically updated. We don't know what type of remote control uh, the, the uh, service provider may have. Uh, so you, and there's often a location, a GPS activity as well. Uh, I think it would be an interesting 
So as I go through this, I'll throw out a couple of topics I think would be interesting research topics. And, and I'm interested in the idea, and I'll, I'll get this later, of software phoning home. Um, but it's, you know, people have performed PAC 